Hello, this is Trevor from Telecom Training. In this first video, I'll explain exactly what the OSI model is all about. I'll also talk about the types of applications and protocols that use the OSI model and the purpose of each layer within the OSI model. This diagram is a representation of the OSI model. OSI stands for Open System Interconnection. The OSI model can be seen as a universal language for computer networking. It is based on the concept of splitting up abstract systems into seven layers. Understanding how these layers function is important in order to get a full understanding of how computers, switches, and routers interact with each other in a network. There are seven layers to the OSI model, starting with the physical layer, which is layer one at the bottom. Layer two is the data link layer, followed by the network layer, then layer four, the transport layer, then the session layer, followed by the presentation layer, and finally, layer seven, the application layer. Now, it is important to memorize these layers in the correct order. Don't worry, I have an easy way for you to do so. Using either one of these sentences that I'm going to provide you right now. Sentence one, starting from the bottom, Please do not throw sausage pizza away. And the second sentence is starting from the top. All people seems to need data processing. You can pick which one of these sentences work better for you. When you are accessing an application like Firefox, Chrome, or Explorer, you're accessing a web browser. The web browser is directly connected to the application layer of the OSI model. Let's say you want to get to a website. Let's use cisco.com as an example. You would need the IP address for cisco.com in order to be routed through the internet. First, the computer would look in its cache for the IP address for cisco.com. If it is not found there, it would contact its DNS server to get the IP address. Once the IP address is received by the browser, all data from the application layer will be sent to the presentation layer of the OSI model. This data would include the IP address of the local computer and the remote server, the browser type, operating system, and the accepted language. The role of the presentation layer is to convert all data received from the application layer to an agreed, well-known generic form. The generic form is necessary to ensure that the data sent out to other computers like Windows, Apple, or Linux would be understood. So the presentation layer encodes all text received from the application layer to ASCII. Any pictures received from the application layer will be converted to JPEG. Any video will be converted to MPEG or QuickTime. And any music will be converted to MP3. The presentation layer also encrypts data for internet banking or any other website with an HTTPS protocol would also be encrypted. Now once this is all done, all data within the presentation layer will be compressed to reduce file size and sent to the session layer. The role of the session layer is to establish, manage, and terminate connections between the workstation and the remote server. In addition, the session layer also keep application data separate. For example, if we have two web browsers up on your computer screen, the session layer keeps the data separate, preventing interference between the two. The session layer is a computer function, and the next layer, which is the transport layer, is a router function. So to get data from the session layer to the transport layer, 
port numbers are used. Every octa session will be given a separate port number to be used to get data from the session layer to the transport layer. So here we have all of the data that was sent from the application, the presentation, and the session layer. We have it now at the transport layer. So in order to get this data from the session to the transport layer, since the session layer is the computer function and the transport layer is a router function, port numbers are used. And this is a randomly generated port number that the computer generates. In this case, we're using port number two as an example. So our data is using port number two to get from the computer to the router. So now here we have port number two as our source port, which is the port being randomly generated by the computer. And we have port number 80, which is the destination port for the web server. Now, whenever you're going on to a web server, the port number is always port 80. The only time this would change is if you had a different application from the application layer. Like I say, for instance, you are accessing an email server for instance. Now this port number would change to port 25 for email server or if it was an FTP server you, in the application layer this port number would change to port 21 for an FTP server. But in this case we're talking about port 80 because we're talking about a web server. Now the internet protocol TCP is also added to the transport layer. There are two internet protocols that can be used, TCP or UDP. UDP stands for User Datagram Protocol. It is used for streaming audio or video. For everything else, we use TCP. TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol. TCP has built-in checks and balances between workstation and server to make sure all data reaches its destination safely or at least without being corrupted. Whereas for UDP, data is just sent and we hope it gets there. The way it is sent is similar to mail and letter. You put the letter in the mail and you hope it gets there. That is the basic difference between these two protocols. In this case, TCP is used since we are not streaming audio or video. This layer is referred to as a segment. All of the layers before this one are in the computer and they're just referred to as data. Now here we're looking at the network. Uh, if you look closely, you'll notice that I brought everything down from the transport layer to the network. This entire area here in gray is called a segment. Okay, and I brought the entire segment down to the network area. In the network area, we add the source IP address and the destination IP address. Now the source IP address is the IP address of the workstation and the destination IP address is the IP address of the web server. Now this entire thing, both the segment and the source and destination IP address together is called a packet. Now we're at the data link layer, layer two. And you'll notice here that we have brought the entire packet down to the data link layer. Everything in gray here is the packet. Now we add the source MAC address and a destination MAC address. And this entire thing is called a frame. Now the source MAC address is the MAC address of the workstation. This is a source MAC address here. The destination MAC address is not the MAC address of the web server. I also want to let you know that network cards and switches communicate at the data link layer. Um, just keep in mind that all network cards and switches communicate at the data link layer. Okay? And finally, we have the physical layer where transmission cables or wireless communication is connected. This represents a digital signal of zeros and ones, which is transmitted over the physical medium. This physical layer is called a bit. If this video was helpful to you, please don't forget to click on the like button, it really helps. 
And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button so that you'll be alerted as soon as our new videos are released. My name is Trevor from Telecom Training. Thank you for watching.